Welcome to Protect Your Secret Texts Against Prying Eyes and Debuggers. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, it's been a couple of releases since we actually got a new data type called Secret Text, uh, which is pretty in straight. In straight? What is that word? It's pretty interesting uh, because it kind of allows you to. Uh, to keep certain informations away from from people. Um, let me show you what we can do. So here is a new app, and, and this app has a secret. The secret is right now is located in isolated storage. So isolated storage, and I think there's more than one video on isolated storage, I think, uh, on the channel, but the idea is that you can store something that only this app itself can read. So, so let me show you. So let's say that we need, it could be a key or password or, or something. So we can call it secret and we'll create a text variable and then we'll say secret, uh, not set record, right? Uh, secret equal isolated storage dot, uh, Sorry, that's not how isolated storage works. Let's do it the right way. We say isolated storage.get, then the key, and I know the key is secret. So the key itself into isolated storage doesn't really have to be secret because only the app itself can do it. Uh, so another app will not be able to retrieve another app secret. And then we'll put it into the secret variable and um, and then we will let's let's have a function down here do so do something secret uh, and we take the thing and then we do something here very secret down here so now we can we can use this function up here do something secret and we'll pass our secret value that's pretty nice. The problem is that I can, uh, I can, and anyone can can debug this. So uh, now I'm debugging it, and uh, that was my my super secret value. Um, and that's perhaps not the best idea. The next problem here is that then we could say that, oh, this should, burn, but these things should not be debuggable. But then you end up in a situation where you have something that perhaps should be debuggable that cannot be, uh, where, where like very specific functions in your communication or whatever, that you have to make everything non-debuggable and then it, that's just annoying. So the idea with secret text is that we create this, we turn this into a secret text variable. And then, oh, now this function doesn't work, but it works if we do secret text here. If we, if we were in a situation that this one was going to, um, let's say, uh, do some HTTP stuff down here. So we can do client and then we could do get default headers and then we could do, uh, you see here, if there is something with a secret value, but we could add a value, uh, add a header. And then this, you know, we have the normal text, text, but now we also have text secret. So header comma T our secret text. So let's try to debug this thing again. Let's see how that looks. There we got the, so hidden value. How annoying. Let's see if uh, it's so we just do one so we know we have a value in it now. 
hidden value. Really, really annoying. Uh, so how about if I do secret down here? Also hidden value. If I go over here and take a look, hidden value. So I can't see this. Uh, and if I go into my do something secret function, see now T is also a hidden value. Um, and, and if I were to inspect the headers now, um, so if we if we change this action, let's let's do do it like this. So now we can go headers HTTP headers, and then we could go headers equal client uh, grab this one, and then we can. We can't really, right? That, that's the whole problem. We can, we, we can never get into this when I'm so, I don't even want to try because we will end up in the same thing, that this value is now hidden away. So if you need, in this case, we're just passing it, but maybe uh, we have another procedure. So here, let's even more secret. And this one also gets the secret text. Um, but in this case, what we, we actually need to do something with it other than just pass it somewhere that will accept a secret text. Uh, so maybe this is a really secret function. So this one, we can now declare non-debuggable. And then we could go in here and say var t2 is a text and then you would think you could go t2 equal t but that doesn't work that doesn't work you cannot you're not so so what microsoft is trying to avoid is is a spillover uh that you end up in a situation where you suddenly spill your secret into a uh, a non-protected variable type so you can give it an unwrap if you were on prem so what what else can we do let's see what else we can do if you want to you can do it on run can we do a format c no so in the cloud you can you can uh, you you're kind of st not stuck but but you 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 use it to pass in the other places where you can do secrets. Um, I think you can actually create a secret text in code. So if you can, if you go, let's actually get rid of this thing again. Um, if you do here, we could, we could go and do secret equal, save some secret here. That won't work, but I do believe that we can do that. We can format ourselves into a secret. Yes. So let's uh, debug this thing again. Oh, I had a breakpoint on the wrong. Sales, customers. Now we get a breakpoint. So now we have a secret, a hidden value, but we came from a uh, from a code base. So so maybe to to go back the uh, the other way and say okay, procedure generate a secret and then that one will return a secret text so we can do exit format some secret then we make this one non dig non dig non debuggable wow uh, and then we go up here and we say generate c secret Let's uh, rename this. 
this. There we go. So if we debug this thing now, um, so we have a function. We have to do f11 to get into this function. You see, the debugger just jumped over, and now I have my hidden value because this one was non-debuggable. So we can create our secret here. Um, but we're not allowed to un unsecret a secret, even in non-debuggable, unless you are on-prem. Um, the, the question is if we're allowed to, I guess we're not allowed to really, you no, I'm not, now I'm thinking out loud. I'm, I'm, that happens sometimes, I'm sorry about that. I, I was thinking that you should probably not, let, let's actually verify that. Um, uh, we probably need, okay, sorry. What I'm thinking and, and failing to explain is that what if you have a secret text in a subscriber? Um, I'm not sure it makes any sense. Weird AL uh, code unit something test uh, uh, what are we gonna do we're gonna do a uh, integration event my procedure test x include sender false we don't care about that secret text That kind of does work. Uh, put our name switch in here. And this guy. Uh, so if we do test, code unit test, test dot. Uh, no, okay, yeah, okay, so then we need it to trigger that with a function. Um, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting, I'm sidetracking myself right now, I can feel that. So if I do test here, x is a secret text, and then I pass x. So now I could test, sorry, and then it's called secrets, of course. Wow. That was a very long way out of saying that you should probably not expose your secrets out in, in events, uh, even though there's, the, I guess there's still secrets. Um, at least in the cloud. Uh, but but no, you shouldn't. Sorry, that was a uh, that was a detour. I do apologize. Somebody put in the uh, in the, in the comments right after they subscribe that uh, you know it's the professor sometimes opening up his scatterbrain, and I do apologize for that. I go into every video with a clear intent of. Uh, being done in 10 minutes or something like that. And then somehow I always get sidetracked. Uh, anyway, check this video out. I'm sure I'm getting sidetracked in this one too. Check it out. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.